in part one, I set myself a black and white photo challenge, just to go out and find three interesting black and white photos. This involves thinking differently. This involves pre-visualizing. It's, it's about imagining what something would look like when there are no colors in it. When there are colors, you get lots of separation because the colors separate. But when you take those colors away, how are you gonna achieve that separation in tones of gray? So you have to really stretch your creative muscle, give it a good workout and, and, and work on the pre-visualizing aspect. There was quite a lot of comments under that video saying, well, why don't you just switch the pitch control settings to monochrome? Well, <laughs> I didn't want to mention it in that, in that video. And so I said, later on, I'll give you a tip. It is something you could do. But in that video, I didn't want to tell anyone about that because I want you to stretch your creative muscle. It's really important not to just rely on tech because cameras don't take pictures, you take pictures. And it's your input to the camera that makes the picture interesting, vibrant, exciting. It's about developing your own style, your own way of seeing things and having your own um, exciting interpretation upon them. So let's have a little look in Lightroom. Let's go take a little look and see what we've got and how I convert them. So here are our images. First off, I think we'll take a look at this one here, which was the, the table shot, because I really kind of liked that. But also then go and take a look at the one up the end here, this one here when we shot into the sun. I know we did the one with the fence post, but I think those are probably the two most interesting. So, now that's interesting. Look at that, my thumbnail's just changed. Lightroom's obviously having a weird five minutes. Never mind, we'll just leave it to get on with it, shall we? So where would we begin? I would recommend just make a virtual copy. Um, there we go. I've already got one virtual copy. Isn't that interesting? It keeps putting the wrong thumbnail on the right image. How weird is that? Um, I've already got one virtual copy, which is the one I made for the video. And then there's another here where I did a, a very long letterboxy shape because that's the banner I use on my website when we put up a new video. It's still doing that weird thumbnail. I've never seen that before. Here we have our color image, this is a virtual copy, so where do we begin? Well, there's a couple of ways you can do these things, and I'm just gonna show you a little shortcutty thing. The obvious is like you just pull the saturation out, but here's the thing with that. Um, you kind of lose data in color channels. I'm gonna recommend that if you click on the black and white here, um, Lightroom does a better job, and if we go into here, you can see you've got an S curve in the different color channels, and that means you can control those channels. I'm not going to go in depth here because this is quite a long subject. In my Seven Steps to Perfect Pictures Lightroom course, we go, we spend a whole week actually working on this kind of stuff to do with color channels and color controls. But it is really interesting, it does give you more control. We don't need it with this image. So we've got our black and white. I recommend you do it using the black and white button here or down there on the HSL Color BMW panel. What about tones? Tonal range is looking really good. Exposure is looking really good. There's not much to do there. I might just take the highlights down a hint. Um, shadows don't really need anything. The whites, what do we got? They're looking pretty good. I'm just gonna check them. I'm gonna slide that till they start to just on the edge to sparkle. And I'm gonna take the blacks down because I want some blacks in here. I want this to have, in fact, I'm just gonna do this by eye, Never mind what the, the mask says. Let's just have a look. Somewhere around there, that's giving it quite a nice sort of a look. What else? The clarity. Let's just pump that up a little bit because clarity is going to make it sort of really shiny. Now, I don't like that. That's way too much. I think one of the most common mistakes in starting with post-production is going too far. How far is too far? That's another good question. We addressed that on week seven of Perfect Pictures. I'm just going to push it into about here, I think. That looks pretty good. Now, I've really got a goal and a plan for this because when I shot it, I knew I liked these textures down here. I knew that I liked these lines and I knew that I liked the number 27 and this little bit of bench poking out. If you remember, I said I didn't like this dark area here. I thought it looked a little bit uh, and it interfered. So what I want to do now is just take this lighter area down a bit so that it just kind of, it's not quite such a collision here. And to do that, I'm going to grab hold of a grad filter. I'm just gonna pull one in something like that and whip that across here. It's not bad alignment. Just make it line up. Just take it across somewhere there, maybe feather a little more, something like that. It's not gonna need much. What have we got? It's already on minus. Let's just switch that off so you can see. So that's with no adjustment. I'm just gonna mouse over and use the down arrow key and just by eye, just have a little look as I sneak that down. 
it's somewhere around there, I think. What have we got? Minus half a stop. I'm going to take it up a bit. I think it's too much. It looks fiddled with. I don't want things to look fiddled with. There we go. I'd say that is pretty good. So that is a really kind of simple image to do. It's pretty obvious. Yes, I had to shoot it upside down. So what you've got to do is rotate it. Just flip it. Job done. Let's have a little look at this one up the end here. Um, shooting into the sun. Now, lots of people have made comments saying, oh, isn't it dangerous shooting into the sun? Won't it damage your sensor? I've read all sorts of conflicting things about this online. I shoot into the sun a lot. I love it. I've never had a problem with my sensor. I don't think it's a good idea to leave your sensor just pointing at the sun endlessly. No, I think that's probably a very bad idea or to sort of, you know, leave it on a long exposure, but you don't need to leave it on a long exposure because you're pointing into the sun. I've never had a problem with it. As for damaging your eyes, yes, you can. Be very, very, very careful. I use a mirrorless, which means I'm not actually looking at the sun. I'm looking at an LCD. I'm looking at a little LCD panel so I can stare at that as long as I like. It's not damaging my eye. But if you're using a DSLR, be very, very careful. I strongly recommend sunglasses, things like that, squint. What about our plan for the image? Well, I kind of like this haziness across the sun. I'm not worried about the fact the sun's burnt out because some highlights do burn out. That's just a natural thing, you know? If you look at the sun with your eyes, it's burnt out. Nothing you can do about it. Look at the filament in a street lamp, you know? It's burnt out. It's just the way it is. I've got a whole video about that coming up fairly soon. So what's my plan? I like the light in this flag. That's the bit which really drew me. I like the light. I just like the simplicity. I like the textures in the sky. So what do we need to do? Our plan. This is all about thinking about your photography, thinking about your post-production. You don't just rush in, push sliders around willy-nilly, hoping to get a good one. Plan it, think it, have a goal. What excitement do you want to put into that picture? What do you want your viewer to feel and think? You know, what excited you to take the picture in the first place? I'm giving you too much of my seven steps to perfect pictures <laughs> moment but there you go I want the Sun there I want to be able to see the flag it's this light in the flag I like we have a big exposure difference so what are we going to need to do we're going to need to separate the two slightly aren't we so first of all I think I need to select this flag here's a little 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 freebie tip for you something which I often do when I'm going to select something is I brighten it up so look what I want to do is see what I'm going to select now obviously I'm going to leave it like that but I want the light on the flag to be probably more like that than like that but just to help me select it I'm just going to brighten that up a bit let me take the blacks down a bit because it's giving me more edge contrast nearly forgot let's just quickly ping that into black and white there we go back up to there and let's do a selection we've got our flag selected so Let's just leave that selection there for a moment and deal with the sky so that exposure can come back down. Let's get that, probably just reset it, I think, where it was, because the exposure was pretty much bang on. Now, what about our sky highlights? Let's just take them down a bit because I want to pull some of this haze back into it. It's the haze that I liked. Look, Ooh, get in, look at that, I like that. But don't go too far because it just kind of looks a little bit fiddled. I do like the kind of the ring halo we got around the sun there when I reduce it that much, but it's too far, it's the haze that I liked. I like that kind of bright hazy thing. It's about there I think. I like the way that area looks. And we've still got a faint kind of sun glow halo going on there. What about the shadows? I think they need anything. I might just lift them a bit. Do they need anything? No, it just loses stuff so you don't need to touch them. Whites. I'm just going to do a quick check. Let's let that sun go there. Now look, I'm not even going to worry that that's burnt out because why the sun burns out, doesn't it? When you look at it, so it's completely natural. Blacks, uh, where are we going now? This flag, I don't really need much. I think a little bit of black sneaking up the flagpole is probably okay, but I don't want to go much further than that. Maybe a little bit of clarity going on in the sky. I don't know. No, I don't like that. So let's just leave that alone and go to our flag. So we're back into our flag. What do we want to do with that? First off, let's just turn that mask off. Now, let's reset that exposure, so that's where it was. Let's just lift the flag exposure, just look, look, oof, get in. Look at that, it's coming to life beautifully. What else? It's the light here, isn't it? It's this bit of light that we're interested in. So let's just kind of lift the whites a little bit in the flag. What's that gonna do? You see, we're, we're pushing sliders around, but we're doing it with intention. We know why we're pushing those sliders around. We want to lift that light area in the flag. Look, that one seems to be doing it quite nicely. We're just getting a little lift in there, a little bit of white. Look, that's working nicely. Look at how it's helped the light in that flag. That's awesome. If I turn that on and off, look, 
Look at that, look at the light, we look at the life we've got into that flag. And it actually looks far more real as to how my eyes saw it than the original straight photo. So there we go, I'd say that's pretty good. I was about to whiz back and show you the original virtual copy, but like an idiot, I completely forgot. So what have we got here? I think we can go into that one, it should show us. Yeah, there we go. Um, to my eye, it, it was slightly different. And this is where I think the color has kind of you know, got a little bit more life into it because we've got colour separation, which we didn't have before. I think we're pretty good there. The only thing I do think it probably needs, you know what, I'm going to give that flag a little bit more life. This is always why it's worth just kind of looking, thinking, coming back to. There we go, that's pretty good about there. I don't want it to look, you know, like, oh, we brightened up the flag. That's just horrible. Here we go. It's about there, look. So it's only half a stop and a little bit of work on the highlights, and we're pretty much good. The only other thing I think I'm gonna do, I wanna help the sky coming in across here. So let's just take a grad, and just push a little bit of stuff coming in here. I don't wanna affect the sun too much, so I'm just gonna do a soft grad. Just switch that off, because it had a little setting on it. Um, so that's untouched, let's just sneak that down. Look, very subtle little that is too much. I'm going to leave it there. I think that's all I'm going to do. I don't want any more than that. I think that is pretty much awesome. So have another little look at our flag because it just somehow on revisiting it looks a little bit darker than I'd like it. I'm just going to lift it a bit more. I might even lift the shadows in there a little more. That's better. That's what was missing. We just wanted a little bit more going on there. That is awesome so there we go there we have our finished flag shot the only other thing you could do with it of course depending on your end use is just to check your detail there's a lot of fine detail going on in here um there's a little bit of dodgy mist brush work there if i was doing it for real i'd go back and just correct that but i'm not going to make you sit through it so we're on standard default sharpening of 25 i'm just going to have a little look at the fabric i don't even know if you can see this in the video that's better now looking at the, the weave, the fabric, because this is quite important, this texture. We've got a strong texture against a different, you know, sort of soft texture. I think that works very, very well. I've had to take that quite a long way. I wouldn't normally go as far as 60 odd percent, but I have. But it's giving me the look that I want. So that's pretty cool. Masking, well, we're on a very low ISO. We're on 200 ISO. That's because that's where the Fuji goes. Lots of people have asked, why do you only go to 200? Why don't you use 100? Well, it doesn't go that far. I'm just going to put a bit of masking on there just to sort of take it off the sky, but I want to keep the sharpening in all those little fabrics there, so that's all. Here we go, I would say that is our completed image. You see, making black and whites is pretty straightforward. It's, it's not like rocket science. The thing is, having a clear goal and a vision for what you want to do. Think in black and white. Don't just rely on your pitch control settings in the camera to show you what it might look like. When you're starting out, absolutely, but I'm going to give you a new challenge, and that is go out and shoot some black and whites without using the picture control setting set to black and white. Really give that creative muscle, pre-visualization muscle a good workout. So I hope you found that interesting, guys. Um, please, if you did, subscribe to my channel. You can do it down here. Um, click in a few likes. We'd love to hear your comments about black and white photography and what you think about it. You can sign up to my newsletter where you've got a free blog post, a, a little article which goes with all videos. You can do that up there at the top at the moment too and on the address down below. So I hope this has been of value to you. Um, take care and I'll see you next time.